Children typically learn to talk quite quickly and naturally. However, some children struggle to learn language, even though they show normal development in other areas. We call this a developmental language disorder. Developmental language disorders are characterized by difficulty learning language, understanding language, and using language. In other words, children with developmental language disorders typically use simple words and sentences, miss grammatical markers, and have trouble understanding long and complex sentences. In the classroom, language development is a key part of children's intellectual, social, and emotional growth. Much of classroom teaching and learning is conducted using oral or written language. Teachers talk about science concepts, work through math problems verbally, and give instructions, assessments, and feedback in verbal or written format. For students, language forms the basis for understanding, organizing, and thinking about new academic material. Let's imagine a grade 4 classroom. One student in the class, Justin, seems to be struggling in science class. He doesn't follow directions for activities, and he seems to have difficulty answering questions on tests. He doesn't usually contribute to class discussions, and sometimes it seems like he's just not paying attention. At first glance, this may sound like a child who's having difficulty in science, but what if we dig deeper and think about his underlying language skills? For example, Justin uses simple vocabulary. In science class, this might mean that he has trouble using the vocabulary he needs to talk about and learn about science concepts. We call this vocabulary academic language. Academic language is a particular challenge in science for a number of reasons. Many words that students are familiar with in their everyday life, such as the word energy, take on a more specific meaning when they're used in a scientific context. Many vocabulary terms in science are also metaphors. For example, when we talk about a scientific field, we're not referring to a literal field. Science instruction requires learning of many new vocabulary words along with new concepts. Justin has difficulty learning these vocabulary terms and does not have the academic language needed to support his learning in other academic subjects such as science. Similarly, he communicates in short, simple sentences. This makes it difficult for Justin to communicate about complex scientific concepts. It also means that Justin struggles to demonstrate his learning when he's required to do so in a written or spoken format. Justin also has trouble understanding long, complex sentences. In the classroom, the sentences that are used to describe scientific concepts are often complex. When explaining hands-on activities in science class, his teacher often gives written or spoken instructions that include many steps. Justin's comprehension difficulties make it challenging for Justin to learn new science concepts and follow directions for activities when material is presented in this format. In most curriculums, goals related to oral language, reading, and writing are included. For example, the Ontario Grade 1 to 8 curriculum includes goals focused on understanding written and oral language, using written and oral language to communicate clearly, fluently, and in a variety of contexts, and reflecting on strengths, areas of improvement, and strategies for listening, communicating, reading, and writing. A large focus in early school age years is on language and reading, during which students receive explicit teaching for these skills. We know that for children with developmental language disorders, early identification and intervention is important to ensuring that they are still able to access their classroom curriculum in other academic areas such as science. In Justin's case, his difficulties went unnoticed and he's now struggling to make progress academically. As a teacher, there are a number of strategies you could use in your classroom to support students who have weaker language skills. Let's again imagine that we are in a grade 4 classroom and we are starting our science unit on habitats and communities with the class. Here are some strategies the teacher could use to integrate language support during their science lessons. Since children with developmental language disorders have difficulty with academic language, you can support them by introducing and highlighting academic language relevant to habitats and communities. 
For example, if you're having a class discussion to introduce the concept of habitats, highlight key words such as population, community, environment, food chain, and adaptation. Write these words down when you use them and post them in the classroom. It is helpful to pair these with pictures or reminders about their meaning. Have students keep a log of the key words and ask them to draw a picture or a doodle as a reminder to themselves about what the word means. Encourage students to use the word in sentences throughout the unit and model this yourself by using and highlighting these words frequently. Similarly, emphasize and restate key points relevant to the unit. Let's say you're working on establishing a definition of a habitat as a class, and you start off with a class discussion about what the students think a habitat is. At the end of the discussion, summarize the key points of the definition that the class has discussed. After that, maybe you'll have your class find habitats by exploring outside or looking at pictures. Gather information from students about what they think different habitats have in common. Then, restate the key points of the definition that the class has come up with. Continue emphasizing and restating key points and new points as you continue working through the units. Providing options for multimodal learning, such as visual cues and concrete materials, will also support language weaknesses in the classroom. This could mean accompanying oral instructions with written words, pictures, diagrams, and videos to help support learning. Also, hands-on activities like exploring habitats outdoors or creating a habitat in the classroom will allow all children to participate in and benefit from the class material regardless of their language abilities. You can also give your students opportunities to signal that they have not understood something. Nurture an environment in which students feel comfortable asking questions for clarification. It may be useful to develop a gesture to use with your students for them to indicate non-verbally that they didn't understand something and need it to be repeated. Keep checking in with your students throughout to monitor their learning during the unit and ensure they're progressing as expected. Allow your students to demonstrate learning in many ways, whether it means physically showing it in a hands-on activity, drawing it or representing it in a mind map, writing about it, talking about it, or combining multiple assessment methods. If you need a student with a developmental language disorder to talk or write about their knowledge and ideas, provide as much scaffolding as is required to support the child in completing the task. For example, if a child seems to be having particular difficulty demonstrating their understanding of a habitat in writing, you could support them during this task by having somebody scribe for them, by helping the student organize their ideas verbally or through a graphic organizer before writing them down, or by allowing them to supplement their written work with drawings to demonstrate their understanding. Finally, if your student is already working with a speech-language pathologist, this is a great opportunity for multidisciplinary collaboration. Your student's SLP may be able to integrate academic goals into the language goals they are working on. For example, they may be able to integrate vocabulary related to habitats and communities into their therapy sessions. Or they could simply include a habitat theme in their work on grammar so that the student can practice producing longer and more complex sentences related to the class material during their therapy sessions. By integrating language support into science teaching, teachers can help support students with developmental language disorders in other academic subjects and ensure their language weaknesses do not prevent them from accessing the class curriculum. Thank you for watching.